Uh, good evening, everyone. So, the presentation is uh, my talk is about the weekly supervised methods for detection and localization. So, the agenda is like uh, basically um, give a perspective of like like we are familiar with the fully supervised methods like uh, and different kind of uh, asking and methods and full supervised. Method. And this talk will actually see like. What is it? So it's not already okay. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so overview of the talk will be like first. Uh, we we'll see. Um, we'll see what is the problem definition of this weekly supervised uh, detection and localization. And then we'll see like, some of the challenges when you are addressing the detection in this in this context. And then we'll see some popular idea methods and solutions in related. Yeah. So coming to the first part. Um, so if you see the hierarchy of problems, uh, we have this classification where you are given an input image, and then you only have to just identify the class. If you know that there is only one, you need to locate it with them. And for detection, you have multiple instances, and for each instance, you will be having like different uh, numbers. Like, for example, there are like multiple cats, so you have to localize each of them with a bonding box. So, this is actually the function of your detection and localization. Only supervised set. Uh, what we do is uh, we have this feature extraction part from different ROIs. So the one which is shown in the red is ROI. So we'll extract the features from the ROI, and then we uh, the most important part that we notice here is. Coming out after this ROI pooling layers, it's like one is a, a softmax layer which actually classifies what is the object in this uh, region, and then there is another component which actually regresses towards the bounding box, which is also given during the training time. So, this is like you have these two uh, different objectives in your fully supervised algorithms. Yes. So, what different is in this weekly supervised is like. We are only given a level of the image. Like, for example, in this case, uh, we are given that there's an aeroplane, there's a cat. Like, uh, it's only the image level level is given. And the objective here is to localize instances in the image. So, uh, first, the count of these instances is not known. Uh, so the this is the first image. You have multi, uh, two aeroplanes, and then your uh, your this, this count information is also not given. You just know that there is only this aeroplane, and then the algorithm is supposed to localize each of these aeroplanes in this. Image. And in the second case, there are multiple categories: so cat and dog. So you have to localize each of them. And this is for the weekly supervised detection case. And the localization problem is a bit uh, simple. Here, again, you are given the label, but there is only one type of object, so there is only one cat or dog or something like that. And then the objective is like to locate in the image where is the cat or is the dog with the bounding box. So, uh, Detection or localization with this weak supervision is important. Uh, the main factor is about the cost of getting your annotation. Image level tags you can create very easily. Then there's bounding box. Like here, you can see like for different tasks, or different kind of annotation, the time taken for uh, image tags you can just do it like one second. So it's and then uh, for a bonding box, uh, like in fully supervised case, it's like 10 seconds. 
and if you are going for more complex problems like segmentation it will take more time to uh, anod the training set so this is the primary objective that you can reduce this boundary box annotations and scale up uh, the development and also that there are um, the problem that annotations given by humans are subjective so you like if you ask 10 people to do the bonding box they will do different way this two things are the primary motive yeah okay. we'll see the, uh, uh, for a weekly support detection method so you you given an input image then you kind of extract a set of uh, called this called object proposals regions where there will be like image and uh, you extract this using using classical techniques like uh, selective search or else box things commonly used and then from this proposal you can you have to extract features with that uh, for that we have some ROI pooling layers here and then uh, uh, once you get the features, then you you can actually uh, uh, last, like in the last layer you'll have a softmax, uh, and then which will give you probability for each of this proposal, like to be what category, and then finally you'll aggregate this probability and then generate a class level uh, pro probability, which will be optimized during training. I mean the aggregation stage is required because we are. Class levels, so the uh, information that you are getting from the instances, like this proposal, you need to take it away, and then this is the um, just to optimize um, for uh, localization. It's a bit uh, simple pipeline. Uh, you're given an input image, so this class activation map is the popular idea which people are. So for here, for example, you are uh, kind of a fully convolutional network, and then finally you are getting a feature map. Uh, here you can see like uh, start, uh, colored in uh, blue in uh, red, and uh, then up average pooling, and then it will be uh, you connected to a fully connected layer, which will give you the class probabilities. So. Uh, here you can see that the, there are weights like for every, every channel in in the final feature map you are associating a weight like w1 w2 as highlighted in the figure so this this is actually giving kind of importance of uh, every channel like uh, the w1 corresponds to the importance which the channel corresponding to the blue like that so to get the class activation map you you get a weighted sum of all these uh, feature maps with the weights from the final layers and here you can see that the, there is a dog and then and the activation is uh, kind of occurring somewhere where there's the face and uh, leg part of the dog so this this is a, a common plan for localization thing uh, from an point of it's a fully convolutional network with a global average and a fully connected layer. So, uh, looking at the challenges when you are addressing this uh, problem with image levels, there are several. So we'll discuss each of them. So there are issues with the selection of most discriminatory areas and then the context misunderstanding as the object. And then um, the problem with count of instances then several things yeah yeah the first part is about the selection of the most discriminatory areas so here the thing optimizing the classification objective uh, better accuracy when it's discriminative so here it or um, uh, the face of this uh, human cat 
they have strong active so typical weakly supposed detector like the bsdn it localizes only the head part it it about object or doesn't need to see uh, the full area to put localization score and this is the same thing happened so for uh, uh, the activation map idea that we discussed so here uh, for example we can see it's having a strong activation only in the head part and then it's miss it is missing much of the other wings and all yeah. uh, context is like uh, several in uh, object class will be like co-occurring with some sort of context for example um, this bike category is like it will be like be always a rider or it, there will be a road so if you don't give a precise uh, bonding box annotation for what is a bike uh, the detector will uh, localize everything as a bike like the person plus motorbike and this is something that we when we were running on experiments try to localize the bicycle uh, we were getting the same thing with the log so algorithm here you can see that the, the blue is the the location that we apply the transform and then we get the red as the output and then actual ground truth is the green and it kind of localizes the person and the bicycle together for this bicycle category and uh, this is about uh, when there are multiple distances especially close it kind of uh, fails to establish that precise boundary between these objects because the activation is kind of happening in a uh, in a broad area so it will kind of select those regions which will which will be like uh, covering most of i mean with a single box it will kind of localize all these objects so this happens so in this case here you can see that multiple uh, first to localize it in a single box and then uh, with this intra class variation this is again connected with the problem of for discriminative region things like uh, here for this uh, bike category you can see like the variations in the appearance so what happens is like in if you train strictly supposed detectors it will end up uh, looking at some very discriminative things like for example the wheel of the bike or something like that and uh, another thing is uh, the inference is really slow with this kind of methods um, here, here you can see the uh, running inference speed of some popular weakly supposed detectors so this like uh, the uh, the frames per second rate is very low if you compare that with the fully supposed detectors it can run at 100 frames per second or more, more than like that uh, the part why it is slow is mainly because in the beginning as we seen that it, it has a proposal extraction component and we use if you use edge box it will take 0.2 seconds or so selective search is like 2 seconds like that and uh, so typically they'll extract, extract around 2000 proposals per image to get a good record that they will not miss any object here here in this uh, image i'm seeing i mean you can see that there's a single object with a clean background and i extracted around 100 proposals using selective search so the most of them are noisy so you need uh, to extract a lot of proposals to get a good recall and then with that you end up processing a lot of uh, noisy proposals also so these two things are the main part which make this uh, test uh, slow and uh, with all this see that the here in this table and summarizing the mean average position the metric used to compare the quality of uh, detection so here uh, compared to the fully supposed detectors in the lab you can see the weekly supervised methods are very far on this comparison is on a pascal data set it's a popular benchmark for object detection 
space it's like around half in terms of uh, mean average precision so now then we go to some popular solution I and mean, then methods and solutions like some some of them will be like addressing these challenges and some of them will be like proposing some sort of novel methods so that you can efficiently learn a weekly supposed tutorials i try to very popular paper so it's not like a complete list uh, so the first uh, for the uh, weekly so was localization methods as we have seen that the discriminative areas is the one that you select most of the time when you try to optimize that classification of the team so here uh, um, the popular strategy in this settings is like to erase and learn what what we do is like uh, uh, we try to erase this discriminative areas this one yeah, this will be fine okay i didn't notice um, yeah so the common strategy is like erase this discriminative regions during training and then, uh, then the classifier will start to look for other discriminatory regions. Here you can see that uh, if you don't, if you just use a simple fully connected layer with the global average pooling, that pipeline, you can see that uh, localization is happening at the head. And then when you try to hide some discriminatory areas with so hiding some patches, here it kind of try to see other relevant areas like the legs and all. And finally, you end up getting a good localization. So there are several uh, actually there are several methods which actually use this uh, erase and learn strategy in different approaches. So one, as you are seeing here, in random patches during training, and then the other one is like uh, uh, some of the um, it's, it's called attention based dropout. Some of the The channel and then you can uh, uh, try to drop uh, the most uh, active regions, most activated regions. You threshold you apply, and then uh, that will like the discriminative parts, and then you try to drop out that regions during training. And then um, another one is like. Uh, using two complementary classifiers one will localize the discriminative regions and then the other one you will region and then the other one train without that region and it will try to localize complementary regions of the object so there are in case of the weekly supposed detection methods uh, so it is like a proposal refinement is a popular solution so what what happens is like uh, the idea is like uh, that in this figure in the left you can see that the bird is localized with this uh, uh, red box and it's some um, distributive help part and then what what we can observe is like uh, if you try to see other boxes which are having good overlap with this uh, red one or like which are enclosing this one those will be having good scores but it will not be like uh, the highest one will be the red but they'll the score of the boxes will be also good. It's not re really visible in this figure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the scores will be also good. So they try to choose those boxes and uh, add them as uh, the, the boxes which are having good overlap with this discriminative one. In the first stage, you'll get this um, box that are having good score. Those, those will be the discriminative one. And then you choose other ones which are having good overlap with this one. And then add them as positive and then return it again and then if you do this multiple times you you kind of uh, refine the initial discriminative boxes as you can see in the right that in uh, 
five times when you refine, you are getting good localization in, in these images. So this is another way. And uh, yeah, so another way of looking at this problem of fully supervised is like uh, to cast it as a fully supervised detection with the uh, pseudo ground truth mining. So the advantage in this case is like uh, mm, when you train it uh, as a fully supervised detectors with the region proposal network. So in the detection stage, I mean in the inference stage, you can just uh, use it as a fully supervised detector. So it is like uh, you don't need the uh, object proposal extraction component. So it kind of runs fast. So uh, one of the solution that proposed here is like a, uh, a baseline detector, which will give you some discriminative boxes like this. And then, uh, then you try to extract some pseudo ground truth from this. What they do is like, um, they select those proposals, which are uh, having, I mean, which are overlapping uh, with some threshold values and then they merge these boxes and then with that there is a stage called pseudo ground truth excavation and that will give you some set of pseudo ground truth and in the next stage it's a pseudo ground truth adaptation thing um, what they do is like uh, um, uh, the region proposal network which will give you a set of proposals and then with the one which are having good overlap with the proposal which you obtained from this uh, ex excavation stage, those will be selected and then from that uh, they'll derive a single box that will be taken as a pseudo ground truth and then you train this uh, detector with that pseudo ground truth. So um, to view it more a simplified way, like entire pipeline is what, what is giving is like a, a set of pseudo ground truth and then with that pseudo ground truth, you train it as a fully supported detector. So finally, uh, you can just use the faster RCNN or SSD or kind of other fully supervised algorithms, just and it works like the same way. So it is like running if you want for more faster versions, you can. This is one way to approach the problem. And uh, so this is. Uh, about some sort of strategies like to improve the learning so in this case uh, what happens is like it's, co it's a called curriculum learning so you you try to come up with some metrics which actually quantifies like uh, how difficult is this image to localize so in this case uh, uh, here you can see that they are arranged it with the difficulty scores based on some metric easy to hard and then you try to learn to localize on simple examples first and then you go for a more complex ones. This is some way that you can design some efficient uh, learning pipeline for wiki super detection. Mm. So this part is about uh, efficient methods for this proposal extraction as, we, as you've seen. Like, uh, the proposals that we are extracting are mostly noisy and you end up processing many redundant ones. So this method, what they propose is like uh, to generate the class activation map first and then you obtain the region proposal from this activation map. So you kind of get better quality proposals and then the number will be less. And then it kind of works for a uh, better algorithms. Yep. Yeah. So I just shown here. Yeah. So that's mostly yeah, so summarizing the thing is like uh, we just uh, see what is the uh, this weekly so voice detection and localization problem and then see the standard pipeline for different things and then uh, see the challenges and some popular solutions yeah